new stuff coming to light today in the Boston Marathon investigation. The Sarnaev brothers' parents spoke to the press in Russia just a short time ago. The father says he plans to leave for the West today, although he doesn't yet have a ticket. The mother, meantime, is contradicting authorities, saying her son Johar, who is currently in a Boston hospital, is not writing or speaking. And she says investigators have not started questioning him and complains she's being kept from seeing him. Meantime, not just the FBI, but the CIA put Tamerlan Sarnaev's name on a terrorist watch list, raising new questions about interagency communication and potentially missed opportunities. Secretary of State John Kerry gave the strongest suggestion yet that Tamerlan's trip to Russia could have included some kind of training. We just had a young person who went to Russia and Chechnya who blew people up in Boston. Uh, so he didn't stay where he went, but he learned something where he went, and he came back with a willingness to kill people. Also new, investigators told members of Congress the two bombs that went off at the marathon were detonated with the kind of remote device used to control a toy car. And the suspect's mother also says authorities have asked her about Misha, a mystery friend of Tamerlan, whose uncle says brainwashed his nephew. I want to bring in Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California, who sits on the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. It's good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. So there was an Intelligence Committee briefing held late yesterday. Uh, did you get some important questions answered there? Uh, we did. We got you know, a very good timeline of the nature of the investigation uh, while it was proceeding and, of course, what they're doing now uh, to track down all the leads, both uh, here as well as in Chechnya and Dagestan. Uh, and I, you know, I have to take issue with some of the early reports that somehow the FBI dropped the ball or the agencies weren't talking to each other. And that really doesn't seem to be the case. I mean, we're just beginning this investigation, but I haven't seen evidence yet that there was uh, some big glaring piece that was missed. Uh, the FBI did receive this, uh, as well as the CIA, this nearly identical or identical inquiry from Russia. The FBI flipped up on it. They were not able to substantiate the Russian claim. They went back to the Russians and said, tell us more, give us more to go on, and the Russians didn't respond. So I'm not sure that we're, we can conclude yet that uh, there was stove piping or some of the other problems that we saw pre-9-11. Well, let's talk about some of the specifics, and I'll let you answer some of the criticism with the knowledge that you've gotten about exactly what happened, particularly about this trip. So he shows up at the airport in 2012. Uh, customs officers notice that he's on this list, and apparently that triggered an email to the customs agents who, agent who was actually assigned to this case in the Joint Terrorism Task Force in Boston. But then... Uh, that agent reportedly told officials that he gets hundreds, hundreds of these kinds of emails, doesn't remember that one in particular. Does it make you stand back and say systemically there might be something wrong? Because if somebody's getting hundreds of these in a given day, what purpose does it serve? Well, it's a good question, and I don't think we can give a definitive answer yet. But the reality is we get probably 10 to 20,000 leads like we got from the Russian government. Uh, now, they're followed up on, and I think it's, it's, it's encouraging that in this case, that lead wasn't dropped. The FBI went out, interviewed him, did a background check in terms of online sources. They weren't able to find anything, and one of the questions I've asked is, were there things out there that we would have seen at the time had we done a more thorough check? We don't know the answer to that question yet, but we do know that the FBI did proceed on it. They did investigate it. Um, there are people who are, frankly, of much greater suspicion than these brothers were at the time. That is, we have much greater reason to be concerned about others, you know, many hundreds, maybe thousands of others. And the reality is we just don't have the resources to surveil everyone that we get threat information on. We just don't have that capacity. And I assume uh, never will? Uh, we probably won't. I mean, given the, you know, the extraordinary number of leads that we get, we have to prioritize. And here, the intelligence agencies did prioritize. Uh, this wasn't someone that they investigated and found uh, reason to suspect uh, that they had become radicalized. Had that been the case, they would have been elevated to a next stage. They would have been put on a no-fly list. But they didn't have that information, and so it's hard to say that they, uh, they made some error in judgment or they weren't talking to each other. The reality is they looked, but they didn't find a reason to elevate his status in terms of 
uh, his being a suspect or not being able to fly. And yet he was there for over six months, a uh, part of the, the Caucasus region where, uh, frankly, the radical Islamist uh, population has grown. And you just heard uh, Secretary of State Kerry suggesting that um, Tamerlan Tsarnaev, you know, in Russia, obviously came back with some ideas. I talked to Peter King, your colleague, on this program yesterday, and he said uh, there had to be a higher level of training uh, than people just putting bombs together in a kitchen or in their house. What can you tell us about Tamerlan Sarnaev's time in Russia, and how concerned are you that that might hold some important keys? Well, it may hold some, hold some important keys, but I really think that uh, my colleague may be rushing to judgment on this. The, the reality is we don't know. Uh, we don't know yet what contacts he had there. We do know that the bombs were relatively unsophisticated, uh, and the devices used to detonate them were relatively unsophisticated, that the ingredients were not very expensive, and it's entirely possible that these two put these uh, bombs together on their u own using online sources. Now, it may be that uh, the older brother was further radicalized, or it may be that he received some kind of assistance or training, but so far we don't have evidence of that, and I don't think we should leap to that conclusion. We may find, and this may be even more troubling, that they were completely self-radicalized in the United States, that that's where the real radicalization took place. Now, that is almost a more difficult problem to deal with than someone who travels to a foreign country and gets radicalized, or at least we have maybe something that may tip us off. Congressman Adam Schiff, thank you so much for coming on the program. You bet. This morning